Today we're going to be taking a look at Xpeng Motors' latest intelligent driver's assist system called Valet Park Assist, or VPA. VPA has just become available to P7 owners in China through an OTA software update. Now VPA memorizes parking spaces in garages and then can perform the function of parking without any assistance. Now, why is that so important? Well, in China, most of the people live in these big, large apartment buildings and complexes, and quite often, the parking garages are underground. Now, they don't get GPS signal underground, so you can't use a GPS-based parking assist system in order to park the cars. So Xpeng came out with this system that actually maps out and memorizes the garage and can navigate the vehicle and park it in your reserved parking space. Now, a colleague of mine, Mark Andrews, is in China. I couldn't go there due to COVID travel restrictions. He was able to get a hold of one of the P7s that had a beta version of the software and record some video for us, which we're going to be watching in a minute. But before we do, I just want to mention a couple things. Now, those who watch this channel probably realize I'm kind of a fan of Xpeng. Um, they're one of the Chinese companies that I think are really doing things well. Uh, they seem to be on the cutting edge of smart driving technology, which I think is going to be important moving forward. And quite honestly, I've driven their vehicles. They're really good, solid vehicles. I was actually the first person in North America to drive the Xpeng P7 outside of Xpeng's company on North American soil last year, and I was definitely impressed. So check out Mark's video and let us know what you think in the comment section below. But before you do, don't forget, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. Today, we are in what I believe is the world's largest car park, according to the Guinness Book of Records. We're in a car park in Beijing. And whilst I can't guarantee it is the largest, it is certainly cavernous. But we're not here to talk about records. What we're here to do is to experience a first. The car you see behind me is the Xiaopeng Xpeng P7. And we're here to test the new system from Xpa, VPA, Valet Parking Assist. Now, despite the name, what it actually is, is a memory parking system. So what it does is it memorizes a space in a car park. It's its own dedicated space. So with VPA, there's learning involved. First of all, for the driver, and secondly, for the car. So the driver needs to go through a test to be able to actually activate the system on the car. Currently, this is a beta version. However, it is going to go live for customers in the next few weeks. Now, to go through the system to activate it, you go through a short test, which teaches how the system works, how to use it safely, etc. Once you've done that, the system then becomes active on your car. To activate the actual system in use, you have to teach the car where its space is. Now, the car can memorize up to 100 spaces. However, each space, that, uh, it can only memorize one space per car park. So for example, you might want to have a space in your home, you might also have a space for your office. So those would be two separate car parks, and those would be two of your 100 spaces. What is important to remember in China is there are a lot of car parks, usually underground, often multi-story. And typically, people who live in apartment complexes will have a space like this underneath the building, um, which is their own dedicated parking space, and may well will have a space in their office car park as well. How does it all work? Well, I'm not a tech expert, but what I can tell you is this. It is proprietary software. 
However, it is based on some underlying technologies. So we're looking at things like SLAM, which is simultaneous localization and mapping, and also semantic mapping as well. So those are some of the underlying technologies that it uses, but it adds to this using Xpeng's own technology. And by doing so, it can operate really quite autonomously. It learns the surroundings um, around the car, in the car park, so that once you've taught it, it can find its own way to its space. And what's important is it's not just memorizing a route, but it's also visualizing what's around it in real time. So we've got a suite of sensors on the P7. So we've got uh, five millimeter length radars. We've got 12 ultrasonic sensors. We've got something like 13 or 14 cameras. Those are all in action for learning the surroundings and also then when it's actually doing its automatic parking um, driving, looking around it so that it's doing it safely. So it's avoiding pedestrians, it's avoiding other cars and reacting to what is happening around it in real time. One important thing to remember also with the system is it's not reliant on GPS. Obviously, we're underground at the moment. I think we're in the um, basement two level, if I'm not mistaken. There's no way we're gonna be getting a GPS signal. And that's the case with most of these car parks. There will be minimal, if, if anything, in the way of GPS signals. Anyway, enough talking. Let's actually see how this really works in practice and see it actually parking itself. So right now, we need to actually teach the system how to um, start memorizing the route that we're gonna take. So to do that, we have a P button here, which we're gonna press, and it brings up this screen. Now to start teaching it, we actually press this blue button, so we're gonna do that right now. And we need to confirm that, and that is, I think, this button. Yep. So it's now saying that it's starting. And when we actually start teaching it, we need to keep the speed quite low, below 15 kilometers an hour. So let's start driving around the car park to look for our space, which will be our dedicated space. Uh, one thing we need to be one thing we need to be careful with is actually making sure that we follow the correct directions on the road so we don't do anything illegal in the way of maneuvers because it won't realize that's the case if we do that Oh, it's just actually warned me that I'm going too fast. Okay, I think we're running out of space, so I'm actually going to find our what we're going to call our dedicated space. And actually, for 
ease of filming there's a huge sign there which says welcome to ikea so let's do that so it's very obvious that we go to the correct one later on right now let's reverse into the space if i can actually find the space In. Okay, now to actually finish it, we need to press this button. And we need to confirm. Okay, now we're going to actually exit the car park and then we're going to actually try to get the car to find its space again by itself. So we're actually right by the exit right now. So let's exit and see if it can find its space later. Right now we're approaching the car park again and the system should at some point realize that it's approaching a car park that it has memorized the space in and it will then alert me that it knows where it is and uh, that it can start taking over. So we're going now underground again and let's see where it actually starts recognizing its surroundings. Now I'm hoping it should kick in any moment. So far it has not. Oh yeah, here we go. It's got a blue, um, blue um, icon there. And basically if we just press that, it will start. So let's press it. Now it's now actually taking over. So as you can see, I have no hands on the wheel. Although I need to be careful um, to make sure it's not getting into any problems. So it's just said that it's going to turn left, and uh, which it is now doing. The speed at the moment is around about seven, eight kilometers. Oh, it's gone up to 12 kilometers now. It's telling me to be careful as we're getting to a intersection. I just said that it was going to turn right, which it just has done. It's giving me another warning now about an intersection. It's warning me about safety now. And another warning about an intersection appearing on the screen, although there was no audible warning other than the sound there. If you notice, it'll show the, all the parking spaces around the side and which ones are actually populated by cars. 
And we are now getting towards where we parked earlier. And it's recognized our parking space. And it's going to start parking in our space. There we go, much smoother than my parking. And it says it's been successful. And there we go. That is our first experience with um, the automatic parking system, which is VPA, Valet Parking Assist. One thing that's admirable about Xpeng is they don't just unleash the technology on users and let the user get on with it without really knowing how to use the system. So the user, before they're allowed to use it, has to have to go through a test. And we're going to actually experience that test in a moment. So without the test and passing the test, the system is not activated on the car. So to activate it, we first of all need to scan this QR code on the screen with our phone and it's um, brought up a um, video here and we're going to play the video okay it's playing so let's watch the video so it's explaining how the system works at the moment and it's showing actually a video of it in operation. It said just be cautious of um, people just now. Uh, it said it's found its parking space. And it's now parking in its in its memorized space. So it's now talking about the safety aspects and it's talking about what things it can actually find, things like pedestrians, um, moped riders, speed bumps, um, other cars, those kind of things. Room 
不是会议了，点击马上试试，按照指引使用记忆火车吧。Okay, if we now press this car icon on the screen, and we can scroll down, and there is this icon here which is、um, now activated, except we haven't actually switched it on, but we're now able to switch it on because、um, we have passed our test. So now, if I press that, it will go on. If I hadn't passed my test, I wouldn't be able to act actually activate it. Well, I finished my window shopping without buying any windows. Now, the biggest problem is trying to find my car. No easy feat in the world's largest car park. What I really wish Xpeng would do, and they probably are, as their people-focused technology company, is work out a system to either bring my car to me, or allowing me to find my car easily in this kind of situation in an underground car park. Xpeng actually already do have a system that can do some of that. They have a smart summon feature that was actually designed more for getting a car in and out of narrow spaces. But some users have reported being able to use it to bring the car to them over short distances. Although that is not actually what the system was originally designed for. Parking. Is a problem the world over? I think most drivers would agree that this is one of the most difficult parts of driving. In the UK, where I'm from, parking spaces haven't actually increased in size since the 1970s. Yet car sizes have mushroomed in size over that time. Also, with that, thanks to safety standards, pillars A, B, C pillars have got thicker and thicker. Visibility has got worse and worse, meaning parking is an issue. Xpeng have gone a long way to solving some of that trouble, and I think they're working on newer systems, which maybe will、uh, create an even better self-driving parking function in the future. But certainly, what we've seen today is very impressive.